Hello, good evening and welcome to this edition of Good Evening Ghana. Today is a very special Thursday in the history of politics in Ghana. Because as you know, if you have been following the news throughout the day, it's the 70th, 70th birthday of Flight Lieutenant Rawlings. For a long time military ruler of Ghana and later on a two-term president elected by Ghanaians on the ticket of the now opposition National Democratic Congress. JJ is 70 today. Full of energy, and we congratulate him on the, this achievement. Happy birthday, Flights Left Students Rollins. You are 70 years old today. But who is JJ? And uh, we'll be doing quite a bit of JJ in the documentary that we have already promoted. It's, it's a documentary that's going to look at the 25 years of the National Democratic Congress. It promises to be very informative, so you should wait for that. Hopefully, by next week, we'll be done. We've gotten uh, quite a few interest, significant interest, of people who want to contribute to it. So we are working with them. And next week, hopefully, we'll have the documentary out. But it's JJ's birthday, so we have to say a bit, shouldn't we? And Flight's Lieutenant Rollins burst onto the political scene on uh, May 15th, 1979. Most of our viewers may not have been born. Nevertheless, history is always there for you to learn. He arrived on uh, May 15, 1979 uh, with the bad news. He arrived uh, onto the political discourse and narrative of Ghana as one who had attempted and failed to secure government illegally. Flight Lieutenant Rollins had attempted a coup against the military government on the 15th of May, and uh, he was arrested. He was tried in Burma Hall, and he was nearly about to be sentenced to death when June 4th occurred. So he came on the May 15th, but on Monday morning, June 4th, 1979, this was the voice of Flight Lieutenant Rollins, his first interaction with, with Ghanaians by national radio. Very, very frightening voice. Here is JJ. I'm here to tell you just one or two things. If any further bloodshed has to be avoided in this country, everybody might have as well realize that the ranks have borne the blood of the suffering of this country for too long. They want bloodshed. They want bloodshed. So for heaven's sake, do not stand in their way. By the time June 4th occurred, Mr. Rollins' instincts about controlling the narrative in the minds of people, which became part and parcel of him throughout the many years that he was president, was already with him at that young age. The um, evidence suggests that Mr. Rollins, ahead of May 15th, had engaged with the graphic and had told the graphic editor that he wanted a photograph of him on the graphic front page when he was seen of the um, president at the time the head of state, General Akufu, at the Kotoka International Airport. He was mindful, perhaps, that a few days later he'll be announcing himself as a coup leader and a photograph of him should be ready for people to see uh, who he is. In those days, photographs were not as common as we do these days from the mobile phones. So Mr. Rollins was thinking ahead, a very astute PR person, I should say. This is the conversation he had with the editor of the graphic, Elizabeth Ohine, about putting his photograph on the graphics front page before the coup. Flight Lieutenant Rawlings said to me that, oh, uh, he was going to lead the group of soldiers that were going to see off General Akufo at the airport. Because General Akufo, having become chairman of the SMC2, that day he was going to, I think, the Gambia and Senegal. And Flight Lieutenant Rawlings said to me that, oh, he was going to be the officer who was going to lead the guard of honor at the airport. Could I please send, make sure that uh, the graphic cameras capture this? So at the meeting, the graphic, the morning meeting where we send out reporters and such, I declared an interest. I said, to my colleagues at the meeting that I have an interest. There's a friend of mine who is going to lead the detachment that will see of um, the guard of honor for General Kufo. That can the cameraman who is going please make sure that they take a photo of him. He's called Fly Lieutenant Rollins. And everybody laughed. And we put this picture of Fly Lieutenant Rollins leading the guard of honor detachment on the front page of the graphic. A few days later, Fire Lieutenant Rollins stages or attempts to stage a coup May 15th. 
this is a few days later. So that day, as it happened, the graphic was the only person that had a photo of the person who had tried to stage the coup. And why did we have a photo? Because we had photographed him leading this detachment at the airport. That's, that's the only reason we had the photo of him. Now, the reaction to that, to that attempt all around the country from all our reporters was, oh, please, these soldiers, we are tired. What's this? We are going back to uh, civilian rule. We are going to have elections. Why is somebody trying to stage a coup again? That was the general impression and I believe even among the military at the time. It wasn't until the trial started and the director of public prosecutions, Mr. Akins, read as the prosecution's uh, initial statement. So that was Flight's left hand Rollins and his instincts to lead the narrative. So he became the military ruler. June 4th was successful. It was a house cleaning exercise. He was a very popular leader those days. Ghanaians used to sing his name as JJ, a young 30 or so year old military officer burst onto the scene. And his mantra was anti-corruption. Um, his ethos was anti-corruption. It was equalization in society. It was fundamentally a bit of socialism anyway at the time for Fly Left and Rollins. But he handed over. Uh, later on, some of his friends tell us that he didn't want to hand over, but he did. And uh, Dr. Liman became the president of Ghana, having won the elections in uh, July or so, 1979. This handover event took place in September 1979 at Parliament House. And in reading his speech, uh, JJ again entertained the crowd. Uh, was he warming himself up to the crowd, indicating that he'll be coming back sometime? Here is what happened at the Parliament House in 1979. While they were paying exorbitant rent, and while they were dejected and despondent because of the intolerable, intolerable English language. Because of the intolerable heights to which inflation in the country has generally risen. So what happened? Flight left and Rollins burst onto the political scene again when Ghanaians were welcoming the um, New Year, 1982, 1st January 1982, when Ghanaians were in church, most likely, as they do today, welcoming the New Year. Uh, Flight left and Rollins was planning something else. So on New Year's Eve, just about the dawn of New Year, Rawlings shocked the Ghanaians again, announcing himself as a political leader, still quite popular within the psyche of Ghanaians, uh, but he announced himself again as the military ruler, 31st December 1981, disturbing and destroying and pulling down the Third Republic. Here is JJ, 1981. We are asking for local defense committees at all levels of our national life, in the towns, in the villages, in all our factories, offices, workplaces and in our barracks. There is an immediate task for these committees, that of defending this revolution and ensuring the exposure of saboteurs. Especially in our border areas, we are requiring the people to form their defense committees to begin to assist border guards and police to guard our borders. These defense committees are to defend the democratic rights of the people and expose corruption and any tendencies to undermine the revolution. So JJ ruled the country uh, under an establishment proclamation uh, with the title of a government called the Provisional National Defense Council. The PNDC was a military government. But for the first time, there was a lot of innovation into this military government. There were civilians who were also part of the military government that led the military government. We can talk about, um, may they rest in peace, uh, Justice D.F. Annan and Mr. P.V. Obing, Kwame Nahoy, who is still happily with us. There was also Chachu Chikata, who is still happily with us. Uh, there was also Dr. Kwesi Boche, uh, who is in the news recently for something else, but he was also part of the group. They looked like a team that was committed to delivering something for Ghana, and they ruled for a very long time. Ten years it was, from 1981 up to 19. 
1991. And then the constitution was promulgated. Elections were held in 1992 and Fly Left and Rollins won the elections and Mr. Rollins became a constitutional leader. Mr. Rollins is also, and that's significant for the next part of this program where we are reporting on Achimota Speaks, the last uh, speech that was given. Mr. Rollins is also a member of the Achimota Old Students Association. And uh, during one of the, the, actually the first Achimota Speaks, Mr. Yawin Sako talked about Achimota being responsible for both the black and white of government. Did Rollins come to mind when Yawin Sako said this? Have a listen. Leaders that do not listen are soon overthrown hopefully in our circumstances by the ballot box. For it is the job of us all to ensure that this country, once divided so much by the bullet, in coup after coup, sometimes mistaking as revolution, will now come together to be one on the issue of protecting our democracy, and that the fourth republic will remain an enduring last republic. Fate and fortune have placed us with the responsibility and the penalty of Achimota. The products of Achimota School have always been active vessels in the formation of this nation's history, for better or for worse. We have a legitimate claim to much of what Ghana celebrates and a burden of responsibility for much of what it condemns. So that was Yawin Sako. Was he talking about flies left and rollers? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. There was another important global speech made in Ghana uh, that also indicated um, a certain compartmenta compartmentalization of political character. Barack Obama talked about maybe two or three different political characters. Does it also reflect flies left and rollers? Let's hear Barack Obama when he came to Ghana and gave that famous speech. The 21st century will be shaped by what happens not just in Rome or Moscow or Washington, but by what happens in Accra as well. A person's vote is their sacred right. Now make no mistake, history is on the side of these brave Africans, not with those who use coups or change constitutions to stay in power. Africa, Africa doesn't need strong men. It needs strong institutions. Yeah. Now, America will not seek to impose any system of government on any other nation. The essential truth of democracy is that each nation determ determines its own destiny. So that was Barack Obama when he visited Ghana in 2009. Was he talking about Rawlings? I don't know. But whatever you say, you have to give credit to Flight Left and Rawlings for bringing stability to constitutional rule. Uh, before him, all constitutions, First Republic, Second Republic, and Third Republic had been overthrown. Never mind that he was responsible for the overthrow of the Third Republic. But the Fourth Republic was created under him. And he brought stability um, to the Fourth Republic. He did two terms. And his party lost the election in 2000, and a new party came into power. And that, that should be uh, really the catalyst that propelled Ghana into what we now are very proud of as Ghana having celebrated 25 years of constitutional rule and constitutional democracy. So you have to give that to Flight Lieutenant Rawlings. You also have to give to Rawlings animating the political platform. No one animates the political platform more than Flight Lieutenant Rawlings. Look at the campaigns of 92, 96, and even the campaigns of 2000. Here in 1996, JJ was dancing Agbaja at the Accra Sports Stadium in the final NDC rally. We will miss him, wouldn't we? So that was JJ dancing. But as I said, there'll be more of JJ in our NDC documentary coming up. You cannot miss that one. We are doing an analysis of 25 years of NDC. Here is the promo again for those of you who haven't seen it. I advocated very strongly that we should try and set up a political party which will promote the values of the PNDC. 
The PPA have been there, they have a tradition. The CPP have been there, they have a tradition. They have a network. We don't have any. So let us set up a network before we leave the bank. <laughs> so we basically had a transition and a, uh, 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 a new order uh, based on 10 years of revolutionary experience and the adoption of a constitution which one could say was a kind of amalgamation of the parliamentary and presidential system, parliamentary system of the UK and the presidential system of America. Whether it sits well today or not is another matter. When you see the full documentary, it will be our turn to give you a version of the 25 years of the National Democratic Congress, which is currently being celebrated. We will look at the position and image of Flight Lieutenant Rawlings, who virtually set up this party, or in whose name the party was set up. Uh, to fight electoral fortunes in the 1992 elections up until now. Obviously, there's a bit of analysis going on about the conflict between Flight Left and Rawlings on one hand and the people who just led the NDC in the last NDC government, President John Dramani Mahama, on the other hand. In doing this, we have relied heavily on a book that was written many years ago. It was written by Dr. Kevin Shillington and it was entitled Ghana and the Rawlings Factor. We'll go deep. We will spread out and we will look at the details of what the NDC formation is all about. You can't miss this documentary. It's coming up soon on Good Evening Ghana. Stay tuned. We won for our people through the elections, the presidential and parliamentary elections. It's not power. It's not a throne. We want nothing more than social economic 